This is my boy Link, and he's been through many adventures, swinging his sword, blocking enemy projectiles with his shield, and jumping all over the place. But what if jumping was out of the question? Today, we'll see how far we can get in each Zelda game if we're not allowed to jump. Anything that can be considered jumping is illegal. Side hopping, back flipping, using an item that make you jump, you name it. All right, subscribe to the channel and let's just jump, uh, I mean, let's just walk into it. The first game we'll play today is the original Legend of Zelda for the NES, and I gotta admit that I have great hopes for this one. Being the very first game in the series, it's pretty simple in terms of movements, meaning that jumping isn't even a thing here. Everything is pretty much in two dimensions, as the only things that make you move up or down are the ladders and the staircases. Even the side-scrolling sections from this game all feature ladders, so you actually never have to jump. So yes, this means that it is possible to beat all of the dungeons, find all of the secrets, and even defeat Ganon and beat the game. Well, that's actually pretty cool. What a great start. Now, the sequel, Zelda 2, is actually completely different. This one is a side-scroller, and the last time I attempted this challenge with another side-scroller game, uh, let's just say the results were not quite there. Anyways, leaving the shrine was simple, and I even managed to defeat a couple enemies on my way to the village. The real issue happened once I got attacked in the desert. I ended up being stuck in between two rocks, and there was no way for me to escape. That was a random encounter on the map though, so let's pretend this didn't happen and let's make our way to one of the two caves that we have to go through and... Well, yeah, this isn't gonna end well, is it? Doesn't matter which way you go, jumping is mandatory no matter what. Ah, <sighs> well that's an L. Okay. Back to top-down Zelda with A Link to the Past, so everything will be good this time around, right? Um, well, the first thing we have to do is to jump off our bed. Yeah, <laughs> that was quick. And the thing is, this is not a cutscene playing, I actually have to push the D-pad to make Link jump out of his bed. If I don't, the game will never begin, and Link will just remain there forever. Well, this is pretty dumb, as I'm sure we could have gotten pretty far in the game if we didn't have to jump out of the bed. Oh well. Guess what? Link's Awakening starts off with Link sleeping inside of a bed. And yet again, we have to push the D-pad in order for him to jump off the bed. Oh my gosh, this is ridiculous! But then again, it's not like this game would have been possible anyways, because the first dungeon's item is the Rock Feather, which is an item that allows you to jump. And to proceed in the temple, well, you have to jump across a couple gaps in the floor. So yeah, kinda sucks. Oh wow, Ocarina of Time starts off with Link sleeping once again. The thing is, this time around, Link leaves his bed during a cutscene, meaning I'm not the one pushing any buttons, I'm not the one making him jump, so we can finally proceed through the game. Getting enough rupees to get the sword and shield is pretty simple, allowing us to enter the Great Deku Tree, the first dungeon in the game. The thing is, after climbing up this ladder, we absolutely have to jump on these platforms to make our way to the next area. Oh well, I guess we're not saving Zelda this time around. Now the sequel, Majora's Mask, starts off with Link riding peacefully on Epona until he gets attacked and then Epona gets stolen. Bang! Now we have to chase those thieves and find her back. And how do we do that exactly? Well, we go through this room and we have to jump. Oh wow, this is a bit ridiculous, isn't it? 
At least those illegal jumps, well, they look kind of cool in the game. I mean, he's doing side flips, front flips. Yay. Still, that's a failure. Welcome to Oracle of Seasons. And this 2D game starts off fine. There's no need to jump anywhere at first, as there are staircases pretty much all over the place. I managed to get the sword from a cave and to make my way to the first dungeon. But here's the thing, there is a gimmick in this dungeon. And this is what it is. There's a couple doors that we cannot enter without first jumping inside of a minecart. Yep, you heard me right. We have to jump inside of a minecart. Oh, man, I had hopes for this one. Let's see if Oracle of Ages will perform better, shall we? The intro sequence is a bit longer than Oracle of Seasons, but it doesn't force us to jump at any point whatsoever. I even managed to get to the first temple, and thankfully, there are no minecarts this time around. I sadly cannot say the thing about the second dungeon, which features some minecarts that will force us to jump, but this temple is also home of the Rock's Feather. You know, that power up that allows us to jump? And let me tell you, there's a lot of jumping going on in this temple. So yeah, this is as far as we can go. The next game is some sort of bonus game that was first included with the GBA re-release of A Link to the Past, and it's called Four Swords. This game is meant to be played with friends, and you'll have to work together in order to defeat the evil sorcerer Vati. This game is level based, and the first one, Sea of Trees, was actually quite simple to beat, as there isn't any need to jump. Same thing goes for Talus Cave, the underground level. In fact, we can make our way up to the fourth level, Vadi's Palace, until trouble sets in. You see, this level features a couple gaps to cross, and to do so, the game gives you a new item, Rock's Cape. Yeah, it's exactly like Rock's Feather. It allows you to jump and to glide. And we cannot do that. <sighs> Alright, time for one of my all-time favorites, Zelda the Wind Waker. After waking up, not on a bed, thankfully, we can go down the ladder and do the first few tasks we need to do. First, I got the hero's clothes, then the telescope, only to see the big bird drop Tetra in the forest. Then, it was time to learn the way of the sword, and the first few trials are actually good. Horizontal slice, vertical slice, thrusting, it's all good. Up until we have to learn this parry attack, where Link rolls around and jumps. <sighs> oh no. And if you're not convinced this is a jump, well, let me show you what we learned afterwards. The jump attack. Yep, there's no debate here. The challenge is lost. But come to think of it, if we never get to the forest, well, our sister Ariel will never get captured and we'll never have to save her. So I guess this is kind of a win? Welcome to Four Swords Adventures, the follow-up to the GBA game, and this one is actually kinda cool, allowing you to play on the TV and then moving you to a Game Boy screen if you enter a house or a cave. It's a really interesting concept, and I expected this one to allow me to go quite far. But here's the thing, in the first level, Lake Hylia, there's a section where you must go under this wooden bridge over there, and in order to do so, you'll have to jump in the water. Yep, there's just no avoiding this. Well, that was quick, couldn't even get past the first day! So here's the thing, Minish Cap starts off with Link sleeping on his bed, and, you guessed it, jumping out of it. But the thing is, in this game, this is all part of a cutscene, so it doesn't actually count for the challenge, cause I didn't press a single button! Whew. After the evil dude turns Zelda into a stone statue, we will have to get to the Minish village. And in order to do so, we'll have to shrink to their size. And how do you do that? Well, by jumping on these portals. That's right, jumping. Yep, 
We'll never get to meet the Minish. I'm a bit sad. Twilight Princess starts off by making us get Epona to scare some goats into their little house. After that we have to jump above these gates and go back to Link's house. But this is Epona jumping, not Link, so this means everything is good. The thing is, after waking up the next day, we have to do a couple side quests, including grabbing a baby cradle. And to do so, we have to, you guess it, jump on these platforms. Yeah, this is game over. And you know what? If I cannot win, well, you don't get your baby cradle back, lady. <laughs> See ya! Phantom Hourglass on the DS is an interesting beast. This game is mostly controlled using the touch screen, and at first, I was afraid the sword fighting tutorial would force me to jump, but it didn't. This allowed me to go through all of the intro sequence, and I even made my way to the very first temple, the fire temple. But the thing is, there's a lot of fire all over the place here, and the only way you can go at first is over there to the right. And as you can see, we have to jump across the lava here, and without the ability to jump, well, we just cannot do anything. So yeah, this is another loss. But I still made it pretty far into the game, so there's that. I wish I was about to say the same thing about the sequel, Spirit Tracks, but this one forced my hand real quick. At the beginning of the game, you have to go see Princess Zelda, and then she hands you a letter telling you to meet her using a hidden passage. And if you want to get there, well, you have to enter this door. And how do you get there? Well, by jumping down. Yep, I can't even finish the intro sequence for this game. What a disappointment. And now, another game where Link starts off by waking up. But thankfully, my dude is already off the bed, so there won't be any jumping involved. The thing is, as soon as we leave the house, we have to move up to go talk to that guy. And in order to do so, we have to make this jump over there. There is just no way to avoid this. The gate is closed and there aren't any other exits. Trying to leave from the second floor inside of the building is also impossible because the door is just locked for no freaking reason. <sighs> well, that one was pretty sad. We're back in the world of top-down Zelda games with A Link Between Worlds. And to be fair, this one allowed me to get quite far without ever having to jump. I even got to the boss of the first dungeon and defeated it. Yeah, it went that well. The thing is, afterwards you are given the ability to turn yourself into a painting and move on walls, which is pretty cool but not so cool anymore as we now have to use this ability to move back down the palace. And in order to do so, we have to get out of the painting form and to jump down. Yep, jumping is the only way out of this dungeon. But still, I beat a bus, so you know what, I'm still happy. Triforce Heroes is a painful Zelda game to experience. If you're playing it with friends, it's kinda cool, but if you're playing it by yourself, then you'll control all three links, and this is just not really that fun. It's not like any of this actually matters, because in the very first level, you have to hit those switches to open up the door, and then you have to go on the Triforce. But in order to do so, well, two out of the three links are going to have to jump down. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's all there is to it. Anyways, it's not like I really wanted to play this game for long, though. Welcome to the reinvention of Zelda, the first open world game in the series Breath of the Wild. And wow, is this game one of the best games of all time? The brand new mechanics this game introduces is climbing. You can pretty much climb all over the world, and that also means climbing down mountains and buildings. In a sense, all of this allows you to avoid jumping for most of the game. 
The shrines and dungeons sadly do not allow you to climb, making them a bit more difficult, but the thing is, most of them can actually be completed anyways. In fact, you can actually beat the entire game! I won't show you here myself, but check out this video from Simi Craft Gaming. It's really good and will keep you entertained for the entire hour it lasts. Now, Tears of the Kingdom, the latest one in the series, plays a bit different from Breath of the Wild. There is an intro sequence where we explore what's beneath Hyrule's castle with Zelda and this section can be done without jumping. But after Ganondorf awakes and Zelda and Link get split up, we'll wake up on an island in the sky. I managed to go down this island through the cave by climbing down, which was a bit tricky but worked out great. But sadly, this final part actually forces us to jump down to the big tutorial island. This is the only way to start the game, meaning that yes, we have to jump to go down there. <sighs> This is a bit sad. Anyways, that was a pretty fun experiment and I really enjoyed it. And I hope you did too. If you did, like, subscribe, share, do all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!